Well, I took today at um, the power jack repair is our company, but that's where we do that's where we do the um, regular connector repairs. This motherboard is not really for the power jack repair. It's called usbcrepair.com. That's our other website where we do the uh, USB-C type repairs. The thing is, our primary primary business is. Um, power jack repairs on the regular laptops, uh, USB-C repairs, sometimes if we have time, we put it on the website on the USB-C repair.com saying that we do have a time to work on it, so send it in, we're gonna fix it. Don't expect super fast turn turnaround, usually we do it over the weekends, so like Saturday, Sunday, and if we have time to work on them. Uh, this motherboard is uh, from either Lenovo ThinkPad E15 or Lenovo ThinkPad E14, one of two. My guess it's all the same. The connector itself is definitely faulty. You could see it's kind of bent upwards. You see how it's bent upwards, the connector itself? Right here is where you look at. It should be nice and straight. Now, uh, when it comes to the USB Type-C repairs, uh, you should understand that uh, if it still works, sometimes when you wiggle it just right, then you can send it in. If it doesn't work at all, like nothing, if it's like dead in the water, then uh, usually what happens is uh, one of those IC chip goes bad, this one or this one, which we don't have in stock. And even if you replace the connector, the whole laptop still not going to work. And uh, again, the pricing structure is a lot different on USB-C repair rather than power jack repair. We're still working out the details because every second motherboard, every second laptop we receive here, even if you replace the connector, we can't make it work simply because uh, one of the IC chip is uh, bad. So let's see if we can still get some power to this guy and see what are our chances of the success. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the USB-C connector here. I need to put some gloves on. All right, and if, we be, if you're gonna be able to see some sort of uh, 19 volts uh, reading here, then no, we're not able to see anything. So the chances are like 50-50 that this thing gonna work. Um, let me show you how we're gonna replace this guy here. First, we need to remove this insulation right there. By the way, the uh, motherboard came in slightly crooked because the packaging was um, sufficient. Uh, not so much the motherboard, but the heatsink right here, as you can see, got crooked. But it's not nothing, nothing, nothing fatal, so to speak. Um, let's. Remove this guy right here. It's gonna melt when I will try to desolder the connection. So we're gonna remove that. And uh, what you can see is we got a whole bunch of connectors, a uh, whole bunch of parts on both sides. Let me show you. What we have is uh, those pieces here right there, right there. Uh, if any one of those guys flies off the motherboard when we work on this guy, then I would not be able to do much because they are extremely tiny and there is really no good way to, there is really no good way to solder those guys back. So I need to insulate those guys. Uh, what I'm gonna insulate it with is just regular uh, foil. And then on top of the foil, I'm gonna put a captain tape Captain tape is something like that. Um, and this captain tape gonna keep the foil in place and it also doesn't let the heat through. So again, you can probably fast forward because there is really nothing special going on right here right now. And I don't wanna use the uh, sharp screwdriver because it penetrates the foil and I don't want the foil to be penetrated. I just wanna put it in a way so that it won't get separated. So here, I just put it all over like that in the back. And what I do next is I'm gonna take this piece off. We're gonna put some Captain tape on top right here. 
uh, captain tape gonna keep the foil in place because not only we bend it here but we also gonna keep the foil in place all right guys i'm really trying to do my best here to explain and show you everything that's involved so a like would be appreciated or a comment that we do a good job would also be appreciated and here we're gonna do here we're gonna do this thing right here because i think besides my channel nobody really goes into details on how to properly do this guy here now there are several i mean i've seen some people doing this kind of repair in a somewhat correct way which you can do for something like nintendo switch uh, but for for the laptops uh, because nintendo switch works off of the five volts i believe i don't think that the nintendo switch has a handshake to boost up the voltage maybe it has a handshake to boost up the voltage to 12 but um, the important part is uh, on Nintendo Switch, as long as there are plus and minuses on the USB Type-C connector uh, connected, it's going to work. But on when it comes to the laptops like Lenovo, you have to also make sure that the handshake and the data signals are soldered in place correctly in order for the, mod, uh, in order for the power supply to boost up the voltage from 5 volts, which is... Uh, uh, which is the voltage that gets introduced to the jack when it's connected. So basically, you connect the power supply to the motherboard. And the power supply does a handshake with the motherboard. And the motherboard says, I need, uh, I need 19 volts or 20 volts. Well, it's 19 something. Um, we, we're going to see it if it's going to be fixed i need 19 volts and uh, and the power supply switches and it gives it 19 volts and as you can see we got 12 pins here oh no it's nine pins one two three four five six seven eight nine oh nine yeah nine pins on the bottom here and i guess we got also nine pins on the back i was thinking it's 12 pins well, anyways, and some, some pins around it here. All right, so the goal here is uh, to take this guy off properly. What I need to do is I need to add some... You could add some low melt solder right here. Uh, but my low melt solder for some reason spreads all over the motherboard and then I have a hard time um, taking it out so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna i'm just gonna add the leaded base solder right here right here right here right there and uh, right there and on the bottom once i add the leaded base solder to the biggest legs possible i will add a whole bunch of flux in the back right here and i will just remove the whole thing under the using the hot air um, station let me show you how it's gonna be Alrighty, uh, we mounted another exhaust fan farther away from the uh, video recording studio. So right now the uh, the distortions in the voice and there shouldn't be as much vibration in the in the video because uh, the the fan is not physically in any way, shape, or form um, is uh, connected to the located anywhere near the camera it doesn't exhaust as well as uh, as the primary fan but for the video purposes i think it's gonna be so what i did was i added some flux to the to the jack to the power charging port and i hope you can hear me much better now than before because i do read the comments and people do write that uh, there is a slight vibrations in the camera because the camera is 4k and uh, if it's not 
mounted on a vibration free platform i mean i couldn't see vibrations uh, at all but uh, on the video they do show up so here we're just gonna add more just regular leaded base solder don't inhale the solder it's gonna cause a whole bunch of issues and as you can see i have plenty of protection because uh, the fumes get uh, get penetrated into your skin as well and uh, yeah so something like that all right now once we added the solder here what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put a whole bunch of flux here like that like that and especially on the back of the connector here all right all right so once we put a whole bunch of flux it's not gonna let the solder to all right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up to 350 celsius and we're gonna do next is just use the hot air to get this connector of the motherboard right here the goal is to blow the hot air away from the rest of the motherboard so that the nearby components won't be falling off i probably need to increase the hot air flow in order for the hot air to penetrate the the other side of the motherboard all right, so we got, what we're going to do next is we're just going to warm up everything right here. All right. And then we're going to warm up everything right there. All right. Let me take a look how. And what you want to warm up is the the largest part of the motherboard, not the end right there. All right, yeah, we are at 350. And in theory, it should let go. But in practice, yeah. All right, the goal is to warm it up to the point where the rear the rear pads won't be flying off the motherboard. I need the pads to remain on the motherboard, the rear pads, the, the connector pads. Yeah, like that. All right, good job. All right, good job. Now what we're gonna do is, while it's still nice and hot, we're gonna go through removing all of the solder from the holes. Holes are very important because once the solder gets stuck inside, you can't really remove it quite well. All right like that like that and like that so you have to do it while the board still warm if it loses the warmth it's a kind of hard thing to as you can see right now it's no longer wants to wants to uh, this other no longer wants to flow easier and I have to spend a lot more time trying to desolder what doesn't need to take this long to desolder. All right, looks good. All right. Now, not all of the holes became empty. So what I need to do here is position it in a way so that so that I would be able to 
All right, let's warm the whole thing one more time. All right. No, it needs to be constantly warmed. Okay, this is not working out. We need to put it under constant warm-up process. Let me... Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do next, I will reduce the the temperature of the air down to 300 degrees and I will keep the motherboard constantly warm that way that way I can get all of the solder from the motherboard and while keeping it warm at 300 degrees none of the other components are gonna follow the motherboard so even though we have a constant air flow right here Yeah, and as you can see, the solder on those guys doesn't want to flow well. All right. Let's see if we can attack the problem from this side. The goal is for every single hole to be nice and clean. And if it's not nice and clean, there is no use really. All right, we're probably gonna bring heavy artillery for this guy and that guy because uh, it's not working out right now. And this is my heavy artillery right here.
not, not working out. All right, so here is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna add a little bit more solder. the tweezers and we're gonna add more solder to the to those two pins all right Okay. Raise the temperature just a little bit. And let's do All right, looks good. So just by adding a little bit of solder, we are able to... All right, let's take a look under the microscope. All right, so what we see under the microscope is uh, two holes are still not cleaned. Let me show you this guy right here. You see? This is clean. That looks clean. It's not clean. And this guy right here. Now let me get a different, a different type of uh, tweezer. All right, so thing right here, something is stuck in there. And this guy right here. Let's see if it's closer to the other side. Yeah, I think this guy need to be desoldering. And something else stuck right here. No, not really, this is good. Oh, and this one is good, hold on. It just remains of the flux. Let me see about this guy here. Yeah, this needs to be removed. So, so the goal is to add some flux. And let's do the southern click. Yeah, the smaller soldering iron fits the hole fine, but it's not providing the same amount of wattage as the big iron. So let's let's see if we can just yeah okay, now it looks good. I hope that the new dragon installed there just fine. Let's flip the motherboard over and see what we have here. Something is still stuck inside. Uh, 
All right. All right, I think I found what was stuck inside, and it's out of there. That looks good. Still, there is something right there. Let's see if this is something. Oh, okay. Good job. Okay. Right here. The old pin. Old pin was basically broken of the motherboard because because of the wiggling back and forth pretty much. All right. looks fantastic to me let's clean up the area a little bit all right All right, as you can see, there is still something sticking out right there. And you have to remove it. Like that. All right. Good job. Alrighty, so I will let the ISP to evaporate right on this side as well. Alright, and it looks like a great job on removing. Yeah, on this guy, the hardest part is to get every single, you see those metal shavings right there, that's part of the that's what was stuck in those uh, guys here basically here 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 oh hold on i wonder if this thing is still good or not let's take a look on the other side which one is it this one No, you know, there is something stuck inside right there. This one is clean. 
This one is clean. This one is also clean. All right. We just added some flux. And what we're gonna do is we will try just using the soldering iron to take this guy out of there. And nothing. All right, uh, let's try a different one. Let's see if you can just use the hot wizards to get this guy out of there. Uh, no, we can't. All right, so it doesn't work. It's stuck in there pretty heavily. So what we're gonna do is add some solder to this guy. To this guy. Come on. Oh, come on. No? Nope. All right, let's try a different Southern item. All right. Hopefully it penetrated all the way through. All right. And now we're going to use a heavier iron to take this guy out of there. Let's get some flux here. And let's get some You see? Beautiful. Beautiful. What can a little bit of solder, extra solder, do to get that hole out of there? Alright, so here. Just want to make sure that everything else is nice and clean. Okay, looks good. Alright, so I think I found a compatible connector. Does it fit? Hmm. Something doesn't want to go in for some reason. This side fits, the other side doesn't. Maybe because of this guy here. It should fit flawlessly. Let's take a look what we got here. Oh, that's why it doesn't fit. Oh no, it should fit. We got two right here. One right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on, we got four right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So those two gonna go together. This guy gonna go together. And it should fit. Now the problem is here we got the shield right here in the jack. So I can't use my small soldering iron to solder every one of those pins in the back. So I will try a new method, which I seen online, and online it did work, but in practice I don't know how well it's gonna work. Something here doesn't wanna. Okay, now it now it goes in. Okay. So the goal is, you see, I would not be able to solder every one of those pins here because my soldering iron gonna keep touching this upper pad, the the shield, and it's gonna, and it will, um, and it will short the pins between uh, the shield and the uh, pin in the back. Now I could remove the shield, what I usually do, but uh, this time around I just want to try something else. So I'm gonna remove this guy, set this aside. What I want to do is I want to put some solder here, 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 and here. And once I put the solder there, I want to use the hot air station for that solder to kick in and solder the new connector in place. So let's try and use a little bit of solder here, here. Here and here, like that. Okay, I'm not sure if this is solder, right? Oh, yeah, and a little bit here. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some flux, and we're gonna just use plenty of flux. All right. Now this solder doesn't really melt that well under. So if it's not gonna work with this solder, we're gonna use the low melt solder. And the low melt solder gonna probably melt everything much better. I got plenty of those jacks right here to try this motherboard with. So I'm not really worried at this time about throwing away this connector because I got a whole bunch of them. All right, so we got this guy sitting down, all right? And the goal is to, you know what the goal is to put another pad. Oh, well, I don't wanna put the pad underneath the jack. I wanna put it to the side like that. Let's remove this guy away. All right, so the goal is for the rear of the connector to drop so that this guy would be aligned with this guy. Once the rear drops, once it aligns like, like you see right here, that means that the job would be done. Now, to protect the connector, what I want to use is the, um, is the shield because all I'm concerned about is the rear pins right here. I don't want the hot air blowing into those holes right there. So I'm gonna put some shielding on top of it. All right, this shield is supposed to protect the uh, the insulation up to 300, uh, up to 600. This is a really expensive uh, tape. It's supposed to do a good job. All right, so let's let's try it. I mean, it's probably gonna melt right here and right there, but overall, I think it should be a good job because. Everybody else does it, so I figured I could get it done as well. So let's do, yeah, let's do 350. Now let's see if we can just, uh, I, need, I need everything to be set up properly. All right, so like that. I need to, uh, to get the soldering iron away. All right, and here, let's... I need to see when it gets dropped, so.
All right, seems like it's dropping now. Really well. All right, so it seems like everything got dropped. I, the left side definitely dropped. All right. Let's take a look. The left side definitely dropped. I think I did a good job. Let me see. Okay, this guy is soldered. That guy is soldered. This guy is soldered. Soldered. This guy is sitting there just fine this one is also soldered this one i'm not 100 percent sure i mean it's all soldered i can see that just i'm not happy about how this connection looks like all right by the way let me shut down the hot air let's bring in my uh Let's bring in my smaller No, at the same time I wanna be pressing down on this guy while I'm doing the touch-ups Probably should have put more solder onto the pads. Okay, my only concern is this guy right here. Or is it... There is no touching there, you see? I'm not really confident about what's going on there. Maybe it should be like this, maybe not. Let me... Probably this one had too much solder. And that's the reason why the leg went slightly upwards. Right? Yeah, so let's take a look about this leg. Yeah, so putting too much solder gonna bring the leg upward too much. No, it's soldered fine. Okay. So let's remove the shield. And you can see that the jack is sitting flat on the on the motherboard. Okay, let's zoom out. Okay, and the patch should be here. Okay, so now we're just going to use regular solder to stabilize the whole thing in place. 
Okay, so let's clean up the workspace here. All righty. Okay. What I want to do, I just want to be holding down the front and the back. So now we're going to be doing the same thing here. We're going to put some pressure. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. <laughs> Let's flip this guy over. Good job. And now let's add some slides here and there. Okay, like that, like that, like that, like that. And like that. Okay. That looks good. Looks beautiful to me. All right. And what we're going to do next is we're going to clean up this area. All right, let's clean up this area as well. Oh, what's that little black component doing there on the back right here? Hopefully it's not damaged in any way, shape or form. Let's inspect the rear. Let's clean up the rear as well. All right. And I can see we need to add more solder here and there. You see on the sides? Because it's not holding steady. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some solder here. Some solder there. I hope my smaller soldering card I'm gonna be able to pick this guy up. I mean the smaller iron isn't really made for this kind of 
touch-ups, but I hope it's gonna be fine. Okay, looks good to me. Okay. All right. Don't need the excess of the solder on the jack. Let's see. All right. Okay. Now the most important part is for the inside of the connector not to get any solder on the inside. So this should be good. Okay, wonderful. Looks good to me. And the good news is that smaller little black component in the back did not fly off the motherboard. So that's always a good sign. Yeah, all of the components are still in place. The three black components, the smaller black pieces. Right here, one, two, three, four right there. Those pieces are still intact. So here. This guy here, one, two, three, four. I mean, if they fly off the motherboard, there's really no way to solder them in. And we got a few more right here on the sides. Those bit of guys you can't even see with your naked eyes. Oh, we got a bunch of them here as well. All right. Now this is some factory glue. That's not something I did. Yeah, this is factory glue. I guess they keep flying off, so they put it on the glue. Let's try and clean it one more time here. All right. All right, so if you got exactly the same laptop making model, send it over, you're going to be able to to clean it, I mean, to replace the connector on it. But again, not sure if it's going to work yet, so we're going to check in a few seconds to see if it's going to work. All right, all of that has to has to dry off.
and we're just gonna use uh, uh, 200 degrees here to dry this guy off. Okay, looks well, good. And again, the reason we have a separate uh, separate website for the USB Type-C repairs because as you can see, they take much, 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 much longer uh, to repair than just the plus and the minuses on regular laptops. So here, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna plug in a tester. Let's make sure it's all nice and clean. Plug the tester in. Make sure it goes all the way in. Now we're gonna check each one of the traces to make sure each trace is fine. All right, so the outermost traces are usually negatives. But let me get rid of the auto zoom after focus on the camera oh it's disabled already but for some reason it okay okay this guy oh so okay so don't forget to put the uh, don't forget to turn on your um voltmeter come on get to the side all right so here so that's minus and this one is also minus this might not conduct anything because it's a data signal and that's a data signal okay so we have nothing on a11 and a10 this is the plus right here this one is also supposed to work works 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 plus plus yeah and those two don't work so okay so a2, A3, A9, and A10. No, I mean A10 and A11, those two. A10, A11, A2, and A3. Don't show anything, that's fine. That's totally fine. There is nothing nothing on those. Uh, I think it's sound related or something like that. If you put in the headphones in or something like that. All right, so here on this side, we got the minus here, minus there. Again, those two, B10, B11, B2, B3 are not conducting anything. This guy's conducting, this guy's conducting, this guy's conducting, and this guy's conducting, okay. And they are not shorting, they conduct different values here. Different values there. All right, so technically, the whole thing should work. But in practice, it might not work. So let's see if we're going to get any voltage coming through when we plug it in. Make sure the the connection here is nice and clean. Okay. Let's make sure it's all nice and clean. Because I conduct this guy into a lot of different ports. And sometimes... Okay, so here. So you see, we went from 5 volts into 19 volts and we have a fan spinning right here. Meaning this is good. And 0.42 amps, okay? Now we're gonna flip the switch over. Right now, like that, I guess. And we're gonna plug it in one more time. And we're gonna go from 5 volts up to 19 volts and 0.38 amps. And we got 9 wattage going through. Alright, so the job is done and this motherboard gonna be working fine. Again, if you have E14, E15 thing per Lenovo, send it over. We're going to just do this kind of replacement. This client sent just the motherboard and uh, we appreciate it because we don't have to take anything apart. We just do the main work and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe and you guys take care and have a good day. Thank you.